Carrie from Lovely Etc. And today I'm going to show you how to paint your bathroom vanity. Painting a bathroom vanity is such an easy and expensive way to completely change the way your bathroom looks. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do it, what's the best paint to use, and also sharing my trick for getting perfectly smooth paint finish even on oak cabinets with a heavy wood grain. So let's get started. So as much fun as it would be to dive in and just start rolling on the paint, that is never a good idea. Before you paint anything, you have to start with prep. That's what keeps your paint job looking good and not peeling off within weeks. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove these doors and all the hardware and give the whole thing a good cleaning. Cleaning is always the first step to painting anything, whether it's furniture, cabinets, floors, even walls if they're a mess. So you need to make sure that all the dust, dirt, grease is off so that the paint has somewhere to stick. I am using this Craig Cutter pre-paint cleaner. Um, I really like this, but I also have had great luck using Dawn dish soap in a spray bottle just mixed with water. You just spray it on. I like to just use paper towels. You can also use old rags. Clean it really well and then rinse it with some clean water. Okay, once it's all clean, then you're ready to move to the next step. We're not painting it. So my cabinet is oak. And if you've ever felt or looked really closely at oak cabinets, then you know that they have a really pronounced wood grain. Um, it's so pronounced that even after you paint it, you can still see lots of tiny little grooves and cracks where the wood grain is showing through. Um, so when I painted my kitchen cabinets a few years ago, I learned a really great trick for smoothing out the wood grain so that your cabinets look like fresh, smooth, um, perfectly painted cabinets instead of old oak cabinets that um, have been painted. There's nothing wrong with oak cabinets that have been painted. Obviously, I'm sitting here painting an oak cabinet. But when you take some extra time to smooth out the wood grain before you paint, it just gives it a really nice finish when you're done. And it's really smooth and just looks a lot better, in my opinion. So the simple trick to getting rid of the wood grain is spackling, not wood filler, which is what I had originally thought would probably make sense since it's wood. No, spackling, um, which is the same stuff that you use to fill in little nail holes on your walls. So all you do is you get some spackling. This is the kind that starts out pink and then once it's dry, it's white, which is always nice just to know for sure. Yep, definitely dry. So get a small plastic putty knife and some spackling and just smooth it over the surface of your cabinets, pushing in a little bit so that the spackling fills in all those little tiny cracks that give that wood grain appearance. Okay, now that the spackling is dry, it is time to sand it smooth using 220 grit sandpaper. Once all the extra spackling is sanded off, you'll just see a very light layer, really just filling in all of that wood grain. Then you can just wipe off any excess dust with a dry paper towel. Okay, so these are my cabinet doors, and I am going to be replacing the hardware with different hardware. So, before I paint, I'm going to fill in these old holes. For the um, cabinet doorknobs, for the cabinet poles, with wood filler, and then I will simply sand it smooth so that I can drill the new holes for the new hardware. Okay, so let's talk about prepping your cabinets for paint for just a minute. This is where I think a lot of people get confused, and everybody wants to do the right thing, but a lot of times it's hard to know what is the right thing. How do you know when you need to sand? How do you know when you need to use primer and when you can skip it? Because nobody wants to be doing extra work that they don't really need to. But at the same time, um, we want to make sure we do everything right so that our paint job lasts. So the kind of prep you need to do for your cabinets depends on two main things. One, what kind of cabinets you're painting and what kind of condition they're in and two, what kind of paint you are using to paint them. Are your cabinets super, super shiny and slick? Then you probably do need to give them a light sanding before you can paint. Are your cabinets really rough to the touch and they've seen better days? Again, a light sanding might be good to smooth them out. 
If you have standard Builder Basic cabinets, you really don't need to sand them before you can paint. They're ready to go. Primer, how do you know when you need to use it? Um, it can be really confusing. Again, if your cabinets are super slick, primer's gonna help paint stick to them. If your cabinets are certain really dark woods and you're painting them white, primer is a great idea to make sure wood tannins aren't gonna be bleeding through and making your white paint yellow. If you are using a paint that requires primer, which includes any kind of latex paint, then you need to start with a primer. So again, it depends on what kind of cabinet you're painting and what kind of paint you're using. And I know it can be really confusing to figure all of that out for your specific situation, so I put together a free guide that walks you through the process of figuring out exactly what you need to do to prep your specific bathroom or kitchen cabinets for paint. And I'll put a link to that down in the description and it's just a checklist. And when you answer the questions, it will help make it really clear what you need to do and what you can get by with skipping. For my cabinets, I am using General Finishes Note Paint, which is one of my favorite furniture painting paints. It's also really good for cabinets. And because of that, and because I am have these oak um, Builder Basic cabinets, I can get away with skipping the primer. The paint that I'm using doesn't require primer, and there's nothing about my cabinets that has a need for primer. I can also go without sanding because they're not super shiny or slick or anything. Um, so the only prep that you always have to do is cleaning. Even if it's brand new, you should still clean it because who knows what got on there from the factory. <laughs> always clean. And then for my specific cabinet, I'm also have decided to do this spackle technique to get rid of the wood grain, but that's totally optional. Um, okay, so I am going to finish this and then we can finally get ready for the paint. I know a lot of people want to know if you can get a really smooth paint finish on cabinets without using a paint sprayer and you definitely can. I do have a paint sprayer and I've used it to paint various furniture but I paint most of the things that I paint including my kitchen cabinets just using high quality paint brushes and good rollers and that's what I'm going to be doing in here too. So. I really like pretty paint brushes. I also have had good luck with these little um, small paint brushes from Americana Decor. They are just give a really smooth finish. When it comes to paint rollers, I usually use small foam paint roller similar to this. These are usually um, labeled as being for cabinets and doors, sometimes for trim, and they will usually say they are for smooth surfaces. This is not any particular special brand. It's just off the shelf at the local store. And really, so far, I haven't found a lot of difference between the different brands. Two coats of General Finishes note paint and it covers really well so two coats was plenty and now I am ready to do the sealer. I really consider just skipping the sealer because this paint technically doesn't have to be sealed. You can leave it um, with just the paint finish and it's durable. It's not like chalk paint but General Finishes recommends that you only leave it unsealed if you are painting something that isn't a high use or high traffic surface. Um, I think that probably we're going to be opening and closing these drawers and cabinets pretty much every day. So to be safe, I think sealing is the right thing to do. It's going to take a little bit more time, a little bit more money, but I'd much rather put in a little bit more work now and get results that last for years than start having chips in a few months and really wish that I had just gone one more step. So I'm using General Finishes high performance top coat. This is my favorite sealer. I use it on furniture all the time. It's really durable and the thing I love about it is it's really easy to apply. A lot of furniture top coats are not that easy to apply. They're either drippy or they look milky or they yellow or they just don't go on smooth and general finishes I always have good luck with no matter how I apply it without having to be super super finicky about it. 
Um, so you can put it on with a high quality paintbrush, you can use a foam brush, you can wipe it on with a rag, which I do a lot of times. Today I am putting it on with this blue sponge. This is made by Dixie Belle Paint Company. I guess it's made by them. It's definitely sold by them. And it is my new favorite tool for applying um, top coats to furniture just because it gives a perfectly smooth finish and also it's really easy to use. So I am going to put a coat of sealer on my vanity. Actually, I'm going to do two coats. I'll do one coat and then let it completely dry and do a second coat and then put on the hardware and it'll be done. Just get a little bit here on your sponge and wipe it on. It's usually best to try to go in one direction if possible and to keep a wet edge. If you've heard people say that and never really understood what they're talking about, what they mean is Wherever you stop brushing, that's the wet edge. So you don't want this to dry before you continue to the edge. Okay, I've done two coats of paint. It looks really good. And it's been drying a while, so now I am just drilling the holes for my new hardware. And I have already marked exactly where to drill. I am so happy with how my bathroom vanity turned out and I love the pink color. If you haven't, I would love for you to subscribe to me here at Lovely Etc. I share lots of inexpensive DIY projects and ideas for creating a home you love. And if you haven't seen it, make sure you check out my full reveal of my $100 bathroom makeover. It is absolutely crazy how big a difference you can make with just $100.